On today's video, we're going to cover the home inspection routine. The home inspection routine is extremely important. It's the backbone of your business. This routine makes you look more professional, expedites the home inspection, and prevents you from missing things. You always wanna follow this routine, and Brian is gonna cover why. So this part of the routine, we're gonna start by entering the home, and we go set up in the kitchen. We set out our tools on the kitchen countertop in a professional manner so it doesn't scratch surfaces or anything like that. Then we move over to the kitchen sink, and we turn on the hot water first. The purpose for turning the hot water on first is to make sure we have hot water for the rest of the inspection. If for whatever reason we don't have hot water, we go ahead and do our troubleshooting at this point in time and we go to the water heater, make sure the breaker's on, make sure the elements are working or the gas is on to the water heater. Once we have the hot water on, we make a quick pass through the house. The purpose for this quick pass is not really to do the inspection. We're getting the house prepared for inspection. So we turn on all the lights, we raise all the blinds, we adjust the thermostat whichever season it is, the opposite direction so the condenser's on or the furnace is on during the inspection. We're uh, In each room that we enter, as we're turning on the lights, raising the blinds, we're looking for cracks in the walls or water stains, but we're not trying to diagnose the problem. We're just identifying the location. That way uh, we know when we're in that side of the house or on the out exterior portion of the home or on the roof of that part of the house or in the attic, we know we need to troubleshoot that area. Once we made this quick pass through the house and we have all the lights on, basically the purpose for that is loading the panel box and getting it heating it up and that type of stuff. We're gonna start on the outside of the house. Where we start on the outside of the house, if we're in an area that has fences, we go to the side of the house without a gate and we start on that side of the home. Basically, we do the micro inspection and the macro inspection. And then, and then we, take, uh, we hook a right, we stay right, and we don't pass up any work. So we approach the condenser, we stop at that part of the inspection and we inspect the condenser. And then we go ahead and carry on and make our way all the way around. That helps expedite, that way we're not bouncing back and forth and doing different parts of the inspection. So we get on the roof, we take a look at everything on the roof, we get down, we take a look at everything on the exterior of the home, we go into the garage, take a look at everything in the garage, then we go into the attic area and take a look at everything in the attic area. By this point in time, we've probably hit all of our majors, like our water heater, our uh, condenser, our panel box, and we've gotten in the attic. Now our hands are all dirty, so whenever we leave the attic, we go and wash our hands so that way we're not leaving dirty fingerprints everywhere. And then we go back to the kitchen, and from that point in time, we want to start to the right of the kitchen because we want to end up in the kitchen. So we hook a right, stay right, don't pass up any work. And by the time we get all the way through the home, we're back in the kitchen. That leaves us about 30 minutes to kind of finalize our report and clean up our report. Perfect. So I know that was a lot of information really fast. So what we're going to do is document each step as we go. And it's going to be a little bit slower and we're going to cover all the points. So the one thing that uh, Brian didn't cover was if you have a two story or a three story house, you hook a right from the stairs and then you come downstairs and you hook a right from the kitchen. So you treat each floor separate. But all right, so let's, let's go check it out. Okay, so what we're gonna cover is the introduction with the client. So it's super important, no matter where you're at in the process of the inspection, when the client shows up, you stop whatever you're doing and you go and greet your client. Because you remember, they're the ones paying you and they're the most important person at the time of the inspection. So whenever you uh, introduce yourself, you introduce who you are, and first and foremost, you thank them for uh, hiring you to perform a professional home inspection for them. And then just kind of give them an idea of what's going to happen and during the inspection. So if they show up at the very beginning, you just kind of walk through the process, while you, why are you doing it, and the reason why you're doing it. And then at the end, after you've uh, kind of gone through the process, you let them know whenever I get to the kitchen, there's about 30 minutes left, and then we'll go over all the information at one time. Because during the inspection, it takes time to gather the information and some things, you know, tell stories along the way, and you don't know the whole story story until you're at the very end. And then you'll go over everything with the client at the end of the inspection, line by line at that point in time. 
Okay, the client shows up to the inspection and the process is always the same. If you're on the roof or if you're in the crawl space, you always stop exactly what you're doing and you approach the, and greet the client and the conversation is exactly the same. So, it's, so it goes, hi, I'm Chris, your home inspector. Thank you for hiring me today. Do you have any major concerns about this, about this property? They normally always go, I'm, I'm worried about the roof and the AC, right? Because it's Texas. You always repeat back what you have to say to them. So you say, I'll make sure I keep a, a keen eye on the roof and the AC for you, but would you, would you like me to go over my routine with you? They always say 90% of the time they say yes, but if they say no, you give them a quick routine. So say they say no first. You say, okay, well, I'm gonna do my routine and you'll see me in in the kitchen and judge about 30 minutes left and I'll go over everything at one time. So this keeps everyone on the same page. But say they say yes, they would like you to go over the routine. You go over the expedited version of the routine that Brian covered er earlier. So you say, all right, well the first pass is a quick pass. You might see me moving a little bit quick, but I go, I like to get a full load of electricity on the property. So I, I turn on all the lights, you're more than welcome to play with the light switches while I'm doing the inspection, but try to leave them on in the on position. After that, I go outside, I get on the roof, I knock out the roof, I do the exterior, I do two passes of the exterior, then I come inside, get in the attic, come out of the attic, and then you'll see the detailed pass of the inside. That's where I like to touch everything. I like to get all, turn on all the lights, I like to operate the AC units, I put a stress on the heater, I operate all the doors, you'll see me operate all the, the fixtures and the plumbing. So you cover everything. After that, you'll see me end in the kitchen, give me about 30 minutes, and then I'll cover everything at one time. So the home home inspection process actually starts as you're pulling into the neighborhood. So it's super important not to actually park in the driveway itself or park directly in front of the house. You wanna reserve that for either the clients, the homeowner or the real estate agent. So you always park just past the house or across the street. So let's go start the inspection. So this is kind of just where the home inspection process starts. I'm gonna start by ringing the doorbell if I don't hear the doorbell, I'm going to knock on the door, then I'm going to enter, uh, open the door, announce myself, and then make my way to the kitchen. Hello, home inspector. Anybody home? This is my favorite part of the home inspection is the display of your tools. A lot of people think this is silly, but it is not. This is one of the most important parts of the home inspection. This is where you start to gain the trust of the client. And then also you don't get the dough unless you put on the show. So it's really important to display your tools. It is okay to display the tools that we have chosen because if you noticed, everything that we have is plastic. So it's plastic and plastic will not scratch hard surfaces. So that is the purpose of displaying your tools. You display the tools, you show them, hey, I'm here, I'm here to work for you, and it's time to start that home inspection. The inspection actually starts right here in the kitchen. This is where we're gonna determine if we have hot water, we have gas and electricity. If we have, if we don't have any of these items, then you're gonna go into problem solving, trying to determine where you are missing these items. We're not covering that today, we're only doing the routine. So starting the inspection, you're gonna figure out if you have hot water in the kitchen sink, today we do, but before you turn on the water, you always wanna open up the cabinets and see if there's a drain there. You don't wanna throw a whole bunch of water in there, then that's gonna send you in a spiral. So you're gonna open it up, open up the cabinets, and turn on the hot water. You typically are gonna have this going on for a while as this hot water's rolling. So you actually just don't sit there and wait for the hot water to roll. You actually start doing several things at one time. This is part of expediting the inspection. So you're gonna actually activate the dishwasher, the microwave, the stove top, the oven, all at the same time. That is part of putting a load on the property.
So Chris just illustrated on how to set up in the kitchen, what to set out, and then kind of prepare the house for inspection. So what we're gonna do is, this is where we start our quick pass. We're not doing a full blown inspection. We're not checking every outlet, every switch, every fixture. We're not operating doors and windows. We're turning on all the lights, raising, on, uh, raising all the blinds, and getting the house ready for inspection. So let's get started. So it's super important whenever we're raising the blinds that we use two hands. The reason why we use two hands is because these blinds can be booby trapped. And what may happen is if you just use one hand, it's the, the blind may fall down on your head. Then we're going to make the other part of the room. We're just going to stop and we're going to be looking for any type of cracks and water stains. Then we make the next room. We're going to stop. We're going to look for any type of cracks and water stains. That way you remember we're, wanting to give those areas extra attention whenever we're, uh, when, when we're outside or on the roof. Part of the real quick uh, inspection is just making sure or looking for water stains around the window so we know to give those windows extra attention. So whenever we make it to the front door, it's important that we always double check the locks to make sure that they're unlocked so we don't lock ourselves out, out of the house. I've been locked out on balconies before. And then what we'll do is just kind of keep moving right. When we get to our first door here, what we're going to do is we're going to open the door and we're going to leave it open for one. That way, when we make our second and final pass through the house, we'll close the doors. And when the doors are closed, that means we've been there. We're also going to be looking for cracks on the outside of the wall and cracks on the inside of the wall. We're going to poke our head in, shine our flash up, flashlight to the ceiling to check for water stains. And then we'll mo keep hooking right and making it throughout the house for our quick pass. Following the strategy of hooking and right, staying right, we're reaching our first bedroom. Entering a bedroom is gonna be, gonna be the same every single time. So as we enter it, you're gonna grab the door handle, you're gonna open it, you're gonna look at the, the ceiling, and then you're gonna look at the floor. As you're doing this, you're just developing the big picture of the property. Remember, this is still the quick pass. You're not looking for anything dramatic. You're not doing all the little things. You're just getting the layout of the property as you go. Remember, as you approach the blinds, you want to use two hands. So use two hands as you open it. And as you, as Brian said before, the same process happens again. You want to make sure that you are looking for water stains around the window. And I like to get to each section of the room. So you can see I looked up and down in that section of the room. You want to look up and down at this section of the room too as well. So this, you can see the process repeats itself over and over and over again. Coming to the thermostat, this is one of the next important steps. As you approach the thermostat, this is how you're gonna determine if you're gonna to need to turn on the heat or the cool, depending on the season. So if it's hot outside, you're gonna turn on the AC. If it's cold outside, you're gonna turn on the heat first. You're gonna be able to operate it in both settings during the inspection. So as we come up to it, before you even touch the thermostat, you wanna make sure that you take a picture of it. This can help remind you what settings the homeowner had it at so you can reset the thermostat back the way it had it. So remember, it's important to always hook right, stay right, and stay in routine. This quick pass is all about uh, structural deficiencies and water stains and just getting a load on the house by turning on all the lights and, you know, all, and raising all the blinds. So I was going down the hallway here and I noticed that we have a water stain in the hallway. Remember, we're not gonna try to diagnose this problem now. We're just gonna take a mental note of where the water stain is. So during the, the main part of the inspection, we'll give the attic area in this area and the roof in this area extra attention. So we've already covered how to make the way through a bedroom. So what we're going to do now is just kind of give you a live action shot of it. And just remember, always stay in routine, hook right, stay right. So 
remember, this is the very first quick pass through. So we're not doing any part of the inspection of the bathroom right now. We're just looking for stress indicators and we're looking for any potential water stains. Since this has a stall type shower, this is a good time to go ahead and set our shower pan tester. That way it allows the water to run 20, 30 minutes and we're doing a flood test on the shower pan. This is the only time that you're allowed to leave a bathroom with the water running because of the type of shower shower pan tester that we use. So, oh. so we'll go ahead and set the shower pan tester now. Entering into the next room, you can see that we're going to start to repeat ourselves a lot. We're going to be hooking a right, staying right as we enter into any room, bathroom, living room, bedroom, it all, it all is the same and you're always repeating. So here, as I enter in the living room, you're gonna notice I'm gonna hook a right, I'm gonna be staying right, I'm gonna scan the ceilings, I'm gonna scan the floor, and remember, this is just structural defect and you're setting the property up for the detailed inspection. As I approach the fireplace, you'll notice that I'm not going to inspect it, but I'm going to set it up for the inspection. So what I do is I remove the grate and I'm not gonna even dive in and look in there, I'm just, setting it up for the inspection. You can see I'm very gentle with it. These can easily scratch floors, so be very careful. As you approach the door, same process happens again. You're gonna open up the blinds, you're gonna make sure the door is unlocked, and then you repeat. As you can see, now I'm entering into the kitchen. I'm back. We've hooked a right, stayed right through the entire property. I'm back to the kitchen. So the property is now set up to do the detailed inspection. So where I go now is I, I go from the outside and work my way in, starting from the top, bottom. This is, you're gonna hear us say this several times, top to bottom, and keep that ingrained in your brain. Hook a right, stay right, top to bottom. So we're gonna go outside, get on the roof, do the roof, and work on the exterior. All right, follow us along. Okay, I chose this spot right here because I can get on and off the ladder safely. You can see right here, I can step to the side, I can hop right into a valley and there is no gutter, so there's no risk of damaging the property either. So let's head up to the roof and let's go check it out. Okay, so now we're on the roof and it's time to inspect it. The first thing that we always, I always like to do is I stick to the ridges and valleys and I go to the, t the tallest portion of the roof possible. The main reason why we do this is so I can figure out the path that I'm gonna take to inspect this roof. I want to identify all the penetrations and then that is what I hit first. I hit all the penetrations and then I do another inspection of all the shingles. So this forces me to take a look at the roof twice. So let's head up to the top of the roof and you can watch me do this in live action. As you can see, I'm sticking to the ridges and valleys as you little slippery. So you can see that it's the safest spot to walk. As I get up here, you can see I start to pinpoint all the penetrations on the roof. I see a chimney, I see the flues, I see the plumbing stacks and I'm I'm coordinating the path that I'm gonna take on this roof. So right here, I see all my plumbing stacks and the flues. I'm gonna to go to these items individually and inspect those first. Okay, you can see right there, I've finished with all the flashing and plumbing penetrations, anything that's sticking through the roof. You wanna focus on those areas the most because those are gonna be the areas that are highly likely to leak. After that, we're gonna to move to the shingles. This is gonna be your second pass of the roof covering. This is important too, to make sure that you take a lot of general photos because people are gonna use these photos to either get quotes on the roof or just so you can prove that you were on the roof and it was in good condition when you were there. 
So make sure even if the roof is good or bad, you're taking an average of 10 to 15 photos of all the plumbing penetrations and the roof covering all together. So you can see here, I'm hooking it right, staying right on the roof, just like you would inside, and you're not gonna pass anything up. You can see right here, it's really important to take any pictures of any damage, any lifting shingles. So remember, stick to the routine. Top to bottom, hook or right, stay right. Two passes of everything. All right, let's go start working on that exterior. Now that we've completed the uh, quick walkthrough on the inside of the house and we've kind of designated any points that may have seen uh, water intrusion or structural stress of the home, we're gonna step outside and start on the exterior. This is where the true inspection actually starts. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go off to the side of the house uh, that has the fence without a gate. We're gonna step back and we're gonna get the big picture of you. So we're gonna be far enough uh, away from the property. That way we can see two sides of the property. We can see the roof structure and the roof covering from the ground level to be able to pick up some stuff that maybe we couldn't see from the actual roof itself. Stuff like high nail heads. And then we're also gonna look at the grading and drainage and then the different components of the home as well. After we get the, the big picture, what we want to do is kind of scoot in, get closer to the home and do the more micro part of the inspection. That way we get to each component. We start in one corner, we hook a right, we stay right, and we don't pass up any work. With that being said, we're gonna move off to the fence. We're gonna work our way down the wall. We're gonna stop at the condenser, take a look at everything on the condenser, and then work our way off down the wall some more and then hook a right, make it to the front of the house. So we're starting the micro portion of the inspection. What we wanna do, again, we pick the side that has a fence without a gate, then we're gonna try not to be any closer than 10 feet. You have to move in periodically to be able to get a closer view of things. But what we're gonna do is start at the roof, we're gonna look at the fascia board, the soffit, the freeze board, then we're gonna look at the brick and the grading and drainage, and then we're just gonna move over 10 feet and do it all again. Again, we don't wanna pass up any work, so we start at the roof level, fascia board, soffit, freeze board. We're gonna look at the brick for any type of deficiency, stress cracks, that type of stuff. And then here we uh, are, we have the uh, anti-siphon device for the sprinkler system. We're just gonna pause real quick. Again, not passing up any work and we're gonna do a quick inspection of this component. We move off to the 10 feet and now we're gonna take a look at it again, fascia, Free, uh, soffit, freeze board. Now we're looking at the window components and we're gonna inspect each different part of the component, the sealant around the window. Then we're gonna look at the brick again for deficiency, grading and drainage, make sure the water is still moving away from the house. Then we're gonna move off to the condenser and do all the inspection components that we would normally do with a condenser that we'll show later on in the video. Then we just continue to move on stop over 10 feet. We have the fascia board, soffit, freeze board, brick, again, looking for all the deficiencies that we'll uh, talk about in more detail on the detailed part of the inspection. And here we can document the fact that we know where the secondary condensate drain line is. And then we just hook right, stay right, and keep moving our way around the house. So what we're gonna do here is we made ourselves around the house. We've already taken the big picture so we can continue to just to move along. And then we look again, roof, fascia board, soffit, freeze board, all the window components, the window screens, and then we'll look at the grading and drainage. Here we'll document some of the foliage being too close to the house. And then what we do is we move over 10 feet and we repeat the whole thing again 10 foot sections at a time. Now that we've done two sides of the house, we basically, we move to the next corner and we just repeat the whole uh, series again. We get the macro uh, version, taking a look at the roof, roof covering, and then looking at the grading and drainage. Then we move up close and we just repeat the whole process again on the next two sides of the house.
So you can see that we made all four sides of the house. If you notice that we were taking some general photos as well. So we take just a general photo of the gas meter. We'll put that into the gas meter section of the inspection report and document the location of it. We took some general photos of where the cleanouts are, general photos of where the water uh, supply shutoff valve would be. So next, we're just gonna move into the panel box. Again, we didn't pass up any work. And then from here, we're gonna move over to the uh, detached garage because we wanna do the garage before we go inside and we wanna try to get all the dirty stuff out of the way first. So on this particular property, we have a detached garage. So we're just gonna repeat the same process. We're gonna find a corner do the big picture, do the macro picture, and then we're gonna move into it. Then we'll do the micro part, portion of the inspection. Same thing with every structure, pick a corner, hook right, stay right, don't pass up any work, and then we'll move into the interior of the garage and do all the components on the interior of the garage. Entering into the garage, this is actually where the detailed part of the inspection of the inside starts. You're gonna hook a right, stay right, hugging the wall, and this is where you start hitting all the, the light switches, the outlets, and typically in the garage, this is where the sprinkler box is, and you're gonna knock out the sprinkler system, and then if the panel box is in here too, you're gonna to inspect the panel box. It's extremely important that you knock all of this stuff out on the inside of the garage first before you go into the interior of the property because this is typically where you get dirty. You want to clean yourself up before you get inside to start inspecting it. So right here you can see the sprinkler system. This is at the point where I would start to do the sprinkler system. You always want to knock it out first and then knock, document everything you can with the sprinkler system and then you move on. And then you play some Olympics with all the stuff in the garage. You always wanna do a real detailed search from top to bottom. The garage is the best place to find termites. Whenever you're doing the inspection of the garage too, before you ever operate the garage door, make sure you disconnect it. Make sure you check out the further video on how to properly inspect a garage door opener. Okay, so we finished the inside of the garage. Let's start on the inside of the property and knock out the rest of this inspection. All right, we got a good one today. So we're starting in the attic space and one rule that you never wanna forget and you will go by 100% is you don't look and move at the same time. You plant your feet, then you look at the problems and then if you wanna move, you watch where you're walking plant your feet, and then look for the problems. All right, we're gonna to move to Brian and he's gonna break down the routine of how to inspect the attic space. So now we're gonna break down the attic routine. Remember, everything has a routine and every, everything has a system. So that's what helps you get through the inspection. So as we get into the attic area, we wanna remember safety first. So always keep your feet planted firmly somewhere, then look around, never answer your cell phone while you're in the attic. You'll get distracted, foot through the ceiling, that costs money. So as we're in the attic area, we want to break it down component by component. Often in the attic area, you're going to have heat and air equipment, you're going to have water heaters, you're going to have electrical wiring, you're going to have plumbing stacks, you're going to have uh, bathroom exhaust systems. So what we want to do, even in the attic, we want to go through the routine, you know, hook a right, stay right, don't pass up any work. When you approach something, you do everything with that particular component. So if you're in the attic area and you get to the heat and air equipment, you stop, do everything with the heat and air equipment, and then you firmly plant your feet and move on throughout the attic and continue to move through the attic. Once you get to the water heater, you do everything with the water heater, plant your feet firmly, and then start moving through the other parts of the attic. It's important to always know where your foot's going to be while you're in the attic. So before you step down with all your weight, you step down, you test it to make sure you are truly on a ceiling joist, and then you move on to the next ceiling joist. This will get easier for you over time.
Okay, so what we're gonna do is break it down by component to component. So we'll start off by looking at the top ridge board, then we'll go down and we'll start looking at the rafters, each and every one of the rafters, and what we're looking for is split rafters and those type of things. Then we look at the purlins, we look at the purlin supports, we follow the rafters all the way down to the soffit area, and what we're looking for on the soffits is we do want to see some daylight from the soffit area. That means we're going to have good ventilation. Then we take a, we, uh, take a look at the insulation and record the depth of the insulation for our clients. So once we have taken a look at all the structural components, what we do is we look at all the other components that we'll find in the attic as well, like plumbing vent stacks, the bathroom exhaust vent system, we're looking for spliced wires, and all the other stuff that goes along with the attic. And we don't necessarily have to move, you know, uh, from this particular location, we can use a good flashlight and still be able to look around the attic area and find those other things from one location. That way we're not traversing across too many of the ceiling joists with the potential of stepping through the ceiling. Okay, now we're in a different part of the attic. Remember, just making the attic, hook right, stay right, safely make your way through the attic. So we made it to a different part of the attic. Same routine, top to bottom. We're gonna start at the top ridge board, then we look at the rafters, then we look at the purlins, then we look at the purlin supports, then we look off to the soffit area for that daylight once again. See if there's any changes in the depth of insulation. In the, this particular area, we're gonna, uh, now that we've done that part, we're gonna look at all the duct work that's in place. Then we'll look at the kitchen exhaust fan that's running behind me. We'll look at the wiring again. Again, just break it down component by component. Again, with a good flashlight, you don't have to go all the way to that side as long as you can see the corners of the roof line. So back here, we can uh, see the kitchen exhaust fan, we can see the plumbing, we can see the electrical wiring, we can see all the ductwork. Again, safely making it through the attic area, hook right, stay right. Okay, now that we're almost done with the attic area, we went in, we hooked her right, we stayed right. So the last component that we ran into while we were in the attic area before we left it is the heater. So what we do is we pause, we do a full inspection of the heater, and then we go downstairs, you know, button up the attic area, and then wash your hands and get ready to start on the inside. Okay, so we finished the entire exterior of the property. Now we're working on the inside of the property. This is the part where it gets a little tedious, but it's very important that you put your hands on everything. So we're in the kitchen. We want to end in the kitchen, so we're going to do everything in the kitchen last. So we leave this, all the equipment in here running as long as possible. So we're going to hook a right out of the kitchen, and we're going to start checking all the outlets, the fixtures, the plumbing, the hot and cold water. We're gonna flush all the toilets. We're gonna to operate all the windows. We're gonna check all the door handles and the doors. So you can see what I'm talking about, it being tedious. And anything that you can get your hands on, you're gonna operate and check and make sure that it's performing. Okay, so let's start this inspection, knock it out, get back into the kitchen and finish the job. Okay, as you can see, I'm entering in this room right here. I'm gonna scan up and I'm gonna look down at the, the floor again. You're gonna see that we're gonna repeat some of the basic steps that we did the first pass because it's important to look at everything twice. But this time, you're gonna see checking every outlet, windows, and anything I can get my hands on. All right, let's go check it out. As you finish each area, make sure that you turn off the lights as you go, because if the windows are closed, you checked all the outlets, you checked all the switches, by you knowing that the lights are off, that means with the doors closed, you know that you've completed that room. Okay, approaching the door here, you can. the first time we looked at it, we just made sure that it, it only locked. It wasn't locked, right? So now this is the time that we fully inspect the door. We're checking, taking a look at the glass, the weather stripping, making sure it operates, and then we're always a little aggressive with the doors. If you want a full video of how that we fully inspect a door, check out our other videos. Hooking to right, staying right. You, you see we're still consistently checking all the outlets and operating any doors. We accidentally had this one closed, but you want all the doors open as you approach them. 
you're still gonna do the same thing you did the first time. You're gonna look up into the closet area because you don't know from all that water that you ran that you could see some water stains. And then you're gonna close the door, operate it, and move on. Hooking a right from the front part of the property, we're gonna start entering into the hallways. You still wanna make sure that you're always scanning up and down constantly. A lot of home inspectors make this mistake by only looking down. Most of your problems come from up top. So you'll see I constantly look up, look down, operating anything that I can get my hands on on the right side of the property as you complete. So we're hooking a right, staying right. You can see I'm approaching into a room here and you can see I'm still gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna scan the top of the roof, I'm gonna scan the floor and this is still hooking a right. I'm gonna operate the door and inspect the equipment as I go through. Take a look at all the hardware. I'm gonna make sure that it locks too as well. Hooking a right and we're gonna repeat the same process over and over and over again of how to inspect a property. So if there's something in the outlet that's easily removed, you still take a look at it, you operate it, you try to put it back the way the homeowner had it, operate the window just like before. So you've seen this three times now, probably don't need to put it in the video again. Oh, something easily documented, right? Come up, operate the window down, close it, put it back the way they had it, even though it broke as best you can. Check it and set the window back the way they had it. Get to the corner of the room. You're gonna do the same process again. You're gonna scan, scan again because a water stain might not show up from that side, but it will show up from this side. So important, stick to that process. Hook a right, stay right, top to bottom, operate anything you can. As you can see, I'm exiting the room. I've checked the ceilings, floors, outlets, windows and I'm going to shut it down. I'm gonna turn out the light. I'm gonna close the door knowing that I am done with this room. But moving around the corner here, this is very important step a part of the home inspection. I reached the thermostat. So whatever season you're in, either you when you first turn it on, you turn it on heat or cool. This part is very important. You've been cooling the house or you've been heating the house. It is very important to stop what you're doing, take the time, and shoot all the registers with your infrared thermometer. You're gonna hit and see if there's hot or cold air coming out of those vents, depending on the season. Then you're gonna come back where you're at, right here in your routine, turn the thermostat off, let it rest before you switch it over to the next system, and you're going to continue the routine, move a little bit further down, and then come back and then turn it on to the opposite setting of whatever you had before. Moving on with the inspection, you can see I hit another bedroom. I don't need to go through this process again because I think we've hit it pretty well. So just make sure that you repeat the same process in every bedroom. Look up, look down, check all the, anything that you can get your hands on, operate anything you can get your hands on, turn out the light, close the door. Now that we've covered the bedrooms really well, let's go ahead and move on to the bathrooms and really break down those bathrooms. Okay, now we're in the bathroom. Chris uh, did a really good job breaking down room to room. A bathroom's no different than any of the other rooms in the house other than it has additional components like the plumbing. You have the commodes, you have showers, bathtubs, sinks, and then you have also have bathroom exhaust fans to work with as well. So what we wanna do is when we enter the bathroom, we just don't forget, gotta look up for water stains. We gotta look down for any type of water stains or water damage that may occur from the other component plumbing components within the bathroom and then we also operate the windows like we normally do and then we're going to check the electrical outlets and check and make sure that they have GFCI protection in these areas as well. Then what we do is we'll make our way through the bathroom and we're just going to inspect each component of the uh, toilet make sure the toilet gets flushed at least three times. Then we're gonna check the shower and check each and every component of the shower. And then we'll make our way over to the window. We'll open and close the window. And we'll also run all the water in the sink. We'll do a flood test with the sink or a load test with the sink. We'll run the hot water, cold water separately, and then we'll run them together. After that, we make sure that we button up the bathroom. We make sure the exhaust fan's off, the lights are turned off, the GFI is reset, and then we move on to the next room.
Now that Brian has covered the bathrooms, we're gonna start moving into the living room area or hooking a right, staying right, it doesn't matter which room you're going into, but you can start to see this process doesn't change the entire time you're going through the structure. This process prevents you from missing things. So as you can see, as I enter into the living room, you can see here, I'm going to, if I, whenever I get to this point, I'm gonna inspect the fireplace. If you'd like to see how we inspect a fireplace, check out those additional videos. Then the same thing with the door. I'm gonna inspect the door. I'm gonna put it back the way it was whenever I showed up. And then we're gonna just keep hooking a right, staying right as we move through the property, checking any outlets, fixtures, plumbing, constantly looking up, constantly looking down as we go through the property, documenting, taking pictures of any damage that we have. And we're shutting the property back down, turning off all the lights uh, in the structure. Here we always, we normally like to leave the lights on for the kitchen because this is where we close. And then we haven't hit the laundry room. And now let's go break down this laundry room real quick. Entering into the laundry room, there's a lot going on, especially with this particular laundry room. You, we're actually ending with our last major component as we go through the property. So you can see as we hook a right, stay right, we're going through and you can see that we're going to eventually hit all the major components of the property. So as you approach the major component, just like we did the furnace in the attic, you're gonna start from the top and then you're gonna work your way down to the bottom of the water heater. For more information on this, the specific topic of the water heater, make check out our additional videos. So as we're gonna hook a right, stay right, I'm gonna hit this door right here and then I'm going to get to the washer and dryer. Washer and dryer, inspections in Texas are not required or not part of the home inspection because most people take them. But if the client asks us to operate them, sure, why not? I'll turn on the dryer for them and I'll turn on the washer machine and I'll make sure that they run through a cycle. But whenever the most important part of looking at a washer and dryer is you want to look behind them. That's actually where most of the damage is going to occur because there's hose bibs about here, there's power, and then also the dryer lint. Dryer lint and heat together causes fires. So make sure you look over and into things of anywhere that you can't see or you have to make an effort to see because those are where you're gonna find the problems in the property. So as you can see, we're about to hook a right out of the laundry room. We finished, we're gonna knock out the light and then you're gonna see that we're gonna end in the kitchen and Brian and I, we're gonna break down and talk about the finish of this home inspection. As you can see, we walked through the entire inspection. We ended in the kitchen. I finished up in the kitchen. I shut it down. I inspected all the outlets. I knocked out everything I could in the kitchen, shut all the appliances back down. I went through the property. I made one more time to the one more time and closed it up. So you can see the importance of this routine and sticking to it. So the routine is uh, works really well. It doesn't matter if it's a 10,000 square foot house or if it's a 1,000 square foot house. The routine works on every single property that you go to. You know, and that's really important that you that he's saying that. It's because if you follow this routine on a 10,000 square foot house or a 1,000 square foot house, the most important thing is, is whenever you're done, the report is written on site. Your client is happy because they've get, received the report right then and there. And then also you, especially, you feel comfortable walking away from this property because you know you didn't miss anything because you've repeated the same process hundreds of times and you know that you're gonna cover those major components. So one of the things that really sets you apart is you did 100% of the inspection, you got the report delivered on site, so your referral base is really gonna be happy with you as well because they get, received the inspection report immediately after the inspection. They did not have to wait a day or two for it. And that is one of the biggest selling points in the real estate market is it has to be right then and there. Real estate market's fast and we have to keep up with it, but also still provide a, a very detailed home inspection report. So what we're gonna do is there's additional videos that go along with this one and you can we break down each and every one of the components, a detailed bathroom inspection, a detailed appliance, uh, appliance inspections, detailed heat and air, detailed water heater, detailed roof and everything. So look, watch the additional videos. This video is really important just to show you routine. And then from here, what you get to do is watch the other videos to watch the detailed breakdown of each component. All right, perfect. All right, check us out on the other videos. Thanks guys, bye.